Hello, folks. Welcome back to another edition of the Art Daily Podcast. This is Friday, November 24th, Black Friday. There's a lot of things out there on sale. Crypto's on sale. If you, if you, depends which one you're looking at. There's been some, some crazy pumps in the space past couple of weeks. A lot of hype, a lot of hope. Hopium being served everywhere you look. Someone's talking about the 800K, the million dollar Bitcoin next year, the BlackRock ETF was about to be released. Now they pushed it along. It's interesting to see how crypto is going mainstream. And for the folks who've been here in the space for some time, we've, we've been through through the cycles before. This is this is different. This is mainstream now. This is a whole new ball game. We're seeing poor CZ get get ousted. <laughs> really taking a a company to massive levels of growth and expansion on a worldwide scale. An unregulated space without any rules that now is going to be regulated. And they're going back in time and they're slapping on fines and punishments and charges, which is something that doesn't seem too fair. The rules weren't there. If the rules weren't set and clear and stoned, then there is no clarity. How are folks supposed to transact? How are they supposed to do business and not be penalized later for it? In a perfect world, in a logical world, once the rules are set, then I guess that's when the structure and the boundaries are set and folks need to play within them. Let's see how this all plays out. Let's wish the best for Mr. CZ. And let's find our place in the space. Let's find our way to be able to push the boundaries, to be able to raise the bar, but to be able to do it in a way that we're, we're going to be in compliance and we're not going to get slowed down and we're not going to have to deal with these problems. So far, I think we've been operating in a great manner. We have now our structure. We're going to Switzerland. When we first started, there was a lot of questions. Where are you guys going to incorporate? How are you going to do this? And we, and we told you, so we're, we're going to wait things to, to, to shake out. We're going to see where things develop. And a lot has happened. Quite a lot has happened in these past 11 months. So we see the direction, we see the clarity. And I think we've made the right decisions. And we'll continue to make them as we progress. And the playing field is going to become more clear, more controlled, but there's going to be a lot of opportunity there. And boy, are we wanting, ready, willing, and able to play the game. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Brett Nordine for his Friday updates. How are you doing, sir? Fantastic. Can, can you hear me <laughs> okay? Awesome. Yes, sir. We can hear you right. perfect. I had, to, I had to step out, so I wasn't sure if I had a good connection <laughs> or not. You're perfect. Um, yeah, we uh, finished up a really good week. Um, we saw some great videos today from the de development team in regards to the progress that they've made throughout the week and uh, since our last demo. Uh, so things are looking really nice. Saw, uh, you know, emails getting sent, uh, inboxes getting organized, um, sharing of files with a, a secure link, as well as uh, sharing stories. Yeah, it's, uh, it's shaping up nice. 
nicely. Um, we still have, you know, obviously a couple months of development work to get through password pass key management system as well as the DB pen. So when those components are in place, we're going to be beta testing and every. Mm. You're going big time into the matrix there, Mr. Brent. Oh, am I? Sorry. Let's see. Okay. I think you're, you're doing better now. Let's, let's see. What we can okay. See. Yeah. It might be spotty. Um, but, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but, uh, yeah, a couple months and we'll be, you know, in a place where we can start testing and handing over some, you know, uh, test accounts to people, let them play around with it a little bit. And then we're going to have the marketplace so that we can transact and people can buy subscriptions and all that stuff. So yeah, it's, we've got a great roadmap and the development team's just chugging along and we're, you know, I would say at the halfway point, maybe a little further in terms of development and, uh, you know, some definite milestones to go, but, um, everything's looking great. Um, and then this next week, obviously we're going to focus on with Alex, the new D app, as well as the new website and getting the contracts migrated over to Polygon. So we'll have more updates probably early in the week, next week, um, once he's back and, and in full force so that we can have an idea of when that's going to happen so everybody can get their chance to top up their LSA accounts with BUSD and get in a position and ready for the new minting that's going to happen over on Polygon. Um, so uh, other than that, probably a quiet weekend. Uh, the devs are off for a couple of days and then back on Monday. So um, I've got some administrative things to do, but other than that, uh, we, you know, we're kind of anxiously waiting for the next week of work. Yes, sir. Happy days. <laughs> Happy days ahead. I know Axel will be working with us though, through the weekend. And ideally if we can launch by next okay. Friday, I think that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, that would be huge. That would be great. Yeah. It gives everybody That's plenty of time and, we make sure all everything's buttoned up on our end, plenty of time to test and uh, go through the user flow and all that stuff. So I know he's made some great progress in the last couple of weeks. So I think he's, he's real close. Let's get the crypto. <laughs> Let's get yeah, the crypto. Exactly. Yeah. And I watched right. that video you sent me from uh, Hodgkinson's from Cardano. Very interesting. Yeah, I feel like that pivots here, right? We're going into this uh, out of the wild west and into the regulated <laughs> control <laughs> structure. It's over. <laughs> it's not what it used to be. And man, he's he's always had his his uh, his thumbs on the pulse, right? Of what's happening here uh, from the development side, the industry, as well as I think the uh, political. Uh, regulatory financial systems. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Maybe, maybe we'll watch it if people want to take a look and see uh, what he has to say. But yeah, it's 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 quite it's quite unfortunate. Mm -hmm. You know, well, it's interesting. Is because, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, everything on the Binance Smart Chain now is suspect because the guy who took it over is a World Economic Forum, you know, <laughs> plant. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, this is going to come down hard. So if, if everybody thinks that, you know, these little, you know, these minor projects and all this other stuff that's, that's floating around these rug pulls and stuff that those aren't going to go, you know, probably unanswered. We got another thing coming. I think that this, you know, this is going to crack down on a lot of those projects. So um, if not anything else, they're just going to have complete visibility of what's going on and be able to uh, squash as much of it as possible, you know, and what's going to happen with the DEXs and things like that. You know, they, we know that they want to do KYC on DEXs and, and uh, take as much of those kind of uh, on and off ramps away and stuff like that. So yeah, it was good timing for us. I think it's a good transition. Um, you know, obviously we're going more legit, but we're putting ourselves in a, a place where it's uh, a lot uh, clearer and safer to do business. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we're we're on the on the correct side, right? Technology sector regulated, incorporated, doing business, and being in the, in the encryption business, and providing services in a jurisdiction that has the the, the laws to support privacy. 
So buy the book. It's really important. It's a, it's a, it's a great place to be as, as everything here gets uh, resolved, gets organized. And uh, we, we get to see how everything, you know, is, is really just taken over and how that affects everyone going forward because they, uh, they definitely want it for them. You know, it's, it's proven itself to be a, a market that, that is resilient. They try to stop it. They can't stop crypto. They can't get people to stop creating and dreaming. So they want to control it um, and be profitable at it. So I don't know. Do you guys want to take a check out the uh, Mr. Hoskinson's uh, video? I think it was from yesterday. I sent it to Brad. Brandon, are you in the mood? Yeah, cool. It's cool. Brandon likes, yeah, let's... Brandon likes to see everything. All right, let me see if I can pull it up here. Brandon always wants to learn. Florida Realtors are always looking for the knowledge. So Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's look here. Let's see where it is. Did you have a good time yesterday, Mr. Brandon? Yes, sir. You're, Thank you. You told, me, you told me that it's your favorite uh, holiday for Thanksgiving? Definitely. No presents to buy. No shopping. <laughs> well, the shopping happens after the Black Friday. You know, a lot of sales everywhere. Sheesh. Get your, get your uh, things. Especially the, uh, the internet stuff, man. Huge savings everywhere. All right, let's see if we can uh, get our video bot in order and see what the man himself has to share here with us. Calls it the end of an era. Let's see. Here we go. Hi, everyone. This is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny. Sometimes Colorado. Today is November 20, November 22nd, 2023. And I'm wearing a real fun shirt. So I wanted to make a video, uh, talk about the Binance situation just real briefly. Let me share my screen right here. Wow. So many of you know that my friend CZ stepped down. He said, today I stepped down as CEO of Binance. Admittedly, it's not easy to let go emotionally, but I know it is the right thing to do. I made mistakes and I must take responsibility. This is best for our community, for Binance and for myself. And he put uh, Richard Tang from the former regulator at the ADGM who I actually just recently visited. They're great guys. And the regulatory officer of the Singapore Exchange, Director of Corporate Finance and Monetary Authority of Singapore. Richard is a very effective operator, really smart guy, and I think he's going to do a phenomenal job. CZ I was part of a class of entrepreneurs in the cryptocurrency space uh, who really epitomized the move fast, grow, and uh, innovate side of things. And uh, he ran a business that was regulated or quasi-regulated, depending upon the jurisdiction. And during the early days of crypto, nobody cared. I'm old enough to remember uh, the days of crypto when people would actually go to Mt. Gox and they would transfer money to it using PayPal uh, or other services like that. Uh, and that would... Uh, be just how you bought Bitcoin. There was uh, local Bitcoins and you'd find people and they'd show up and you just, you know, give them some cash. They'd send you some Bitcoin. An escrow agent would deal with it. Um, I remember, you know, uh, people trading Bitcoin at spreadsheets over Bitcoin Talk and other websites. And there were a lot of people back in those days. There was BitPay, uh, you know, if people remember that. Uh, there was Roger Ver and all the stuff that he did. Eric Voorhees, uh, and Mike Hearn, and Gavin Andresen was uh, back in the day. Uh, it was a very small club. Peter Vicini's was another one who tried to go and create the Bitcoin Foundation. That never worked as well as uh, one would have hoped. Um, and there, we had our villains back then, like Mark Carpales. 
than others. CZ came out with a second wave, and Binance was started around 2017, and they became a leviathan in our uh, industry. They were kind of newer in the pack, the second wave of exchanges after the failure of Mt. Gox, uh, and he was one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time in the industry. Trillions of dollars of assets uh, flowed through his exchange, and for a new exchange, uh, that's pretty much unheard of. And given that all those assets were completely invented by this industry, the fact that they had that kind of valuation is extraordinary as well. What's happening right now is a fundamental change in the industry as a whole, where uh, there's a movement towards regulated business. The legacy world is merging with the crypto world. Um, and this is difficult because the legacy world is radically incompatible with the crypto world. CZ wasn't brought down like SBF where there was some sort of massive fraud and he was just stealing from his customers and he had no intention of running a business. At the end of the day, he opened up markets that allowed the enemies of America to basically trade and, and do things. Open permissionless protocols tend to invite that, and the United States has a financial regime that uh, basically has been weaponized. And there's great books like Juan Surratt's Treasury's War uh, and others uh, that kind of describe how the global sanctions regime, AML, AYC, <laughs> anti-terrorist financing works. Uh, and this is just the way the legacy world works, and every single bank and financial institution is subservient to it and the regulatory panopticon that's been constructed, everything from suspicious activity reports to uh, trust us, we know. And the world is becoming very multipolar, and there's a lot of countries now that aren't following that regime anymore. And crypto is kind of caught in the middle of all of this, and um, a lot of entrepreneurs in our space, the era of, well, we don't care, we're not going to pay attention to it, they, uh, they kind of got swept under the rug. And uh, Binance will continue on, and it's going to be under leadership that will basically work with the U.S. government as a partner moving forward, meaning every substantive business decision that they make uh, from this point on probably will be in consultation directly or indirectly with the U.S. Treasury Department, from token listing to new product development. And there's going to be a big timeout, I think, uh, as they kind of – change management and get where they need to go. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's just where they're at. Now, the good news is that we as innovators still have a lot of power. That's why we created Midnight. So you're going to see Midnight is this idea that you can have algorithmically generated law. You can have regulated value transfer protocols, and you can put it together with zero-knowledge proofs. You know, and there's a lot of really cool, interesting academic projects like Stanford actually has a group called Codex, and they work on something called comp law, computational law. And basically what you do is you bring engineers and lawyers and entrepreneurs, and you try to algorithmically define law. And in the Ethereum space, there's even a project called Open Law, where they take real-world contracts and they actually try to add a legal DSL to them. So you combine a smart contract with a legal DSL. But you need a privacy component for this to actually work, which is why Midnight exists. And I do believe we can make it quite interoperable with these things. So the fourth generation cryptocurrency is no longer about scalability and governance and all these other. That's the third generation. That's where we're at. The real fourth generation is about the merger of the legacy world that has these draconian regimes that are incompatible with decentralization and what we're trying to do in the decentralized world and to put them together in just the right way where we can make most people happy. Not everybody happy. Concessions have to be made on both sides. Uh, but um, the era of the crypto industry I grew up in is over. Binance was the last holdout to that. And I've kind of watched one by one uh, many people fall through. There's going to be more to come. I suspect that uh, the U.S. government is going to start hitting more providers of liquidity and also non-custodial wallets will likely get hit um, at some point um, for a variety of reasons, especially if they integrate 
metadexes and these types of things. And so, you know, perhaps MetaMask and others are going to get hit at some point. Um, and uh, that's an attempt to capture from a regulatory viewpoint all the core infrastructure of our industry. And there's a ton of tools that they have. You'll notice in the press conference that they held uh, with Merrick Garland and uh, Janet Yellen, in addition to discussing financial crimes, AML KYC, they mentioned the words national security, national security, again and again and again. And the reason they do that is that national security is tied to the financial markets. And, in, and that's the point of reading Juan's book, Treasury War. It really shows you how the U.S. government thinks about these things. And crypto has gotten large enough and significant enough that it has to fit into the mindset of national security for the United States, European Union, and other great powers as they play a big chess game with the world. So we in the industry have to innovate. Um, we in the industry have to invest and build better technology. And ultimately, I think we can square the circle uh, one way or the other. Uh, for my part, CZ is a friend of mine. He's a good man. And he's going to go through some hard times uh, in the next uh, months and years. Uh, but at some point, I think he's going to come back and be a, a great entrepreneur again and do some amazing things. Uh, but he's going to take a long break, uh, just like Charlie Shrem had to. Uh, he's a, another good friend of mine. Uh, and I've uh, been on his podcast many times, and I remember when he was 21. <laughs> he was the young guy in the room. I would actually think 23 when he started uh, Bit Instant. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, CZ will uh, go down the, the next uh, way. Space moves on. We all move on. Uh, so, you know, we just have to adapt and change and grow. And I'm certainly getting a little older. That's why I wear these colorful shirts to try to keep me young. And you guys keep me young, and there's always something to do and a new challenge to take. For our part, I think we predicted this with Cardano, and we predicted this as an ecosystem, and we understood the need for how to innovate with integrity and to comply with integrity. Uh, and we've invested very heavily as an ecosystem in core technology like PRISM, which allows self-sovereign identity, so identity with integrity, uh, Midnight, which gives all those components for data confidentiality that are required for handling of PII in a regulated context, and a lot of deep thought, how do you build dApps and DeFi in a way that can make people happy, but still preserve the tenets of decentralization. And we even thought carefully about how do we measure decentralization through the Edinburgh Decentralization Index, and a lot about decentralized governance to make sure that there's proper checks and balances and there's not key men or key institutions that can become captured and basically used as a leverage point to control the entire protocol one way or the other. So uh, many more things to come, a lot of work to come, uh, but it's a kind of a bittersweet week. And now we have to enter a new chapter of crypto, uh, the age of the fourth generation, the great merger of the legacy in the DeFi world, uh, the legacy in the crypto world, and a reconciliation. And uh, like what Hegel used to say, you know, it's, there's a synthesis and an antithesis. Uh, we're, we're going a thesis and an antithesis, and we're going to have a great synthesis as they, as they merge together. So there's going to be some way that we can go beyond this. And um, it's going to require uh, a lot of conversations and a lot of hard work a lot of education, and a lot of innovation. So we as a community will do it. Uh, we always do. We always rise to the occasion. Uh, the dream never... Mm. 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 All right. The bot always, well, lately, it's always cutting out the the last part of the thing. You guys hear it okay? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, very interesting. Yes, sir. And we'll talk about it in the Q and A. If there's any questions, maybe we'll go and read between the lines. So, folks, we want to thank you for being here today. Thank you, Brett, for for the updates. Great to hear the development that happened this week with the privacy product development team. We'll be back tomorrow, Saturday. 
Hope you're all enjoying your Black Friday, your renewing memberships out there, getting those heavy, deep discounts. And uh, you can do it today, maybe over the weekend, you'll get to it. Take care, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll stick around for the Q&A. Have a good one.